What's up guys? This is going to be my video review of the Sperry Cole Bay boot. I got a chance to wear these boots last weekend during a big blizzard of 2016 that came through New York and dumped about 30 inches of snow right in my neighborhood. <clears throat> Managed to walk through knee deep snow in these boots, a couple of puddles, went through frigid, frigid temperatures with these boots into single digits and um, back to tell you what I think about them. First and foremost, the positive of these boots. These boots above anything else I'm going to say in this video are very, very comfortable. And I don't know, I have to take my hats off to Sperry. These are maybe one of the most comfortable boots I've worn in a long time. And it's, it has to do with this footbed because what is under this footbed is just a hard, uh, it's something really hard, but I don't know what's in there. It's like magic is inside these boots, but they're really comfortable. You can walk all day. I've walked one of the days in the blizzard, I walked two miles home in knee deep snow. And when you walk in knee deep snow, you're working your legs, your feet, everything out. But my legs and my butt and my calves were sore at the end of the night. But my feet were comfortable, no issues with blisters, no issues with soreness, and very comfortable. I have to say that, take my hats off to Sperry. I don't know what's in this. It's like some sort of magic. Now, second thing I like about these boots is the appearance of these boots. They're very, very great looking boots in terms of, well, the color I have is the amaretto and black color. It's a nice mahogany brown leather and the leather quality and the stitching and the rubber and the detailing of different, I guess, style, it just looks really brilliant. It's, it's a brilliant designed boot. And I've seen similar boots from Aldo, the Agnes boot that they make, and Sorel's. The 1964 Premium Tees are probably the closest in design to these boots. But I think Sperry does the best design of this type of uh, duck winter boot hybrid, rain boot winter hybrid boot. Really good design. Look at the quality. It's like a mesh band here. Uh, the logo is down here. Sperry top side and this, this band there. And then you have the rubber. Rubber is great quality rubber. It's waterproof, of course, but it's also soft and flexible. And I have friends with Sorel 1964 Premium T-Boots. And if you go on the Sorel website, you can read tons of reviews where people complain that those boots and all the Sorel and all the duck style rain winter boots, the rubber sometimes get hard. It stays hard or it comes from the factory really hard. And that rubber tends to split and crack over time. These, I don't think any of that's going to happen to this rubber. It's soft. It's so pliable. But it's firm and it's, you know, it's very uh, good quality rubber. Great quality rubber there. I'm not an expert on rubber, but I know good quality rubber when I see it. That's good quality rubber. Great quality leather. Look at the stitching, the detailing. Everything is good there and it's waterproof stamped. Go around the back of the boot so you guys can see the stitching. Even this suede microfiber, which does have a big negative, I'm going to talk about later on, looks really great. And look at that stitching quality. Just look at that. I'm just going to pause the video right here so you guys could. Just see the detail on that, the leather. And leathers were also very durable to uh, s scratch in. Well, scratch it right there, but it's, it rubs right back out because it's good leather. It smells really good. Go to Sperry, go to one of the Sperry stores and pick one of these boots up and smell the leather. It smells really good, like rich leather. And at, because of that, the result is these boots look like I paid four or $500 for them when in fact they're only $160. And you could get this, and this is a past season boot. Got this for under hundred dollars. You get one of these from anywhere from eighty to one hundred and sixty retail, which is what Sperry wants for them at the store. I sized up in my size in this boot, this particular boot. When I tried them on, I fit a ten and a half. I have ten between ten and eleven is what I usually wear for different things, and I went sized up to eleven purposely just to get a little bit of extra space for wearing wool socks and thicker socks, maybe two three socks if it gets really cold out. And this is the from fall 14, fall 2014, winter 2014 season, model number STS 10166. And it's the amaretto and black color, as I said. Now I sized up because this rubber, and this is what you may want to do if you're looking into one of these boots with a rubber um, bottom like this, rubber toe box. Size up because this is not stretchable. Normal, normal rubber shoes, normal leather, if this was leather or if this was uh, synthetic, sometimes it's stretchable over time, over lots of wear, like breaking them in. But I have a, I have a feel, I'm not an expert in it, but I have a feeling this is not going to stretch and this is not going to break in to, to expand, to give me more room to wear like thicker socks. So I just sized up just to get the space to wear thicker socks. So comfort, style, I mean, it's really beautiful boots, really great quality 
boots and go to Sperry and look, pick these up and you'll see. Now, my favorite part of these boots, are the, apart from the comfort and the uh, great quality material, is the snow and ice traction. Really great snow and ice traction. No slips. I walked two miles over snow, ice, slush, wet pavement, icy pavement. Did not slip. I did not. I wasn't. Didn't feel like I was going to slip in these boots because sometimes you wear boots, you slip once and you're just thinking about slipping or falling all the time. Didn't slip, didn't think about falling. These boots have really great snow and ice traction. And like I said, I don't know if Sperry puts magic in here, but it won't look like it, but it's really great traction in these boots. Compared to a lot of duck boots, people that wear duck boots in the wintertime always complain that they're slipping, sliding, especially those Sorrel boots. Sorrel winter boots with a duck sort of style, duck boot style, Sorrel boot, winter boots. People complain it's easy to slip in those boots, but here, no issue with slippage. Now, we go on to the negatives, and I guess I'll get the lighter negative out of the way. The first negative is these crappy shoelaces that comes, come with these boots out the box. If you look at my unboxing video, you'll see when I took these out of the box, it came with these. It's not, I don't think it's real leather. It definitely can't be real leather because these things, when they get wet, they just stay damp throughout the day, and they don't stay tied. Tied, they don't secure the boot against you know it doesn't tie the boot down it, they just keep coming loose so i got rid of them and i got uh lumber i call them lumberjack shoelaces boot laces size 60 and it's like the boot laces that come with timberland work boots if you ever see timberland new buck work boots come with those type of lumberjack style laces so i got them and they work well to tighten the boot secure securing that boot it's more flexible and these they get wet but they dry quick because it's just a nylon polyester thing but get rid of the laces if you're looking into these boots get rid of these laces just get yourself a pair of these laces they work so much better i don't know if you're into the look or you might be into the look of the leather but there are crappy leather laces i don't even think they're real i think they're fake leather and that's that i mean compare when you compare it to this leather, this is definitely has to be fake because it's not even the same. It's not even the same quality. Normally you would see duck boots like LL Bean duck boots with the leather or the suede nubuck. And then the laces are nubuck suede or leather. And it's almost the same, but here it's not even the same, the same quality as the leather. So that's how I think, why I think they're fake. Moving on, big gripe about these boots, they're not waterproof at all. Now the materials, the leather, down here and the, I'm sorry, the rubber down here and the leather up here may be waterproof on their own, but as a whole, this boot is not waterproof based on the design. Now, the issue with the design, and I left this one on lace so you guys could see, is the tongue gusset in is not waterproof. Normally in boots like this, winter boots or rain boots or waterproof boots, you want this gusset in to be either the tongue material, which is leather here, leather waterproof, or if you have a Gore-Tex liner, lined boots or something like that, you'd want this to be waterproof just like the rest of the boot. But here it's just a cotton canvas fabric with a big hole actually in it to allow for the shoelaces to go through. So there's a big hole right there where my finger is. So it's a hole in that and it's not waterproof. So what happens is as you walk in snow, snow sticks to this because this is where you're walking towards in this direction. So snow is going to just stick to that and slide up. And as snow slides up, it slides right in there. See my finger? And these are laced up kind of tight. Snow will just slide right in there. And what happened when I wore these is this got wet right away. And I kept feeling a wet, cold spot right on the top of my foot. And as a result, the boots weren't warm anymore. So that negative 25 degree rating goes right out the door. And also with this thinness, it doesn't maybe it doesn't trap heat in as you would want because it's so thin, you know. It's like an opening right there, basically. And to give you guys a comparison, I have my hiking boots, my favorite hiking boots right here. Get this out of the way. To show you guys what I mean about tongue gusseting. When the tongue is gusseted to the boot, basically what that means is these are Gore-Tex Saliwa boots. And you want that gusseting, the tongue to be gusseted all the way up so it wraps around your feet, your foot completely from here all the way up. There's no space. And this is Gore-Tex waterproof material. So I could step in a puddle that is as high as the boot. I could step up to the top of the boot in a puddle of water and I, my feet will still dry, stay dry. Now, it's not the same in this boot where the boot may be a higher boot, but the boot is only waterproof up to here because if water gets anywhere, a puddle, and I did step in a puddle where my feet did get wet because of that flaw in the design, water gets right in there. So anything above this, water gets right in there, it touches that, and that gets wet. And the thing with that, it stays wet. And if water gets inside a boot like this with a rubber, sort of sealed rubber, 
your feet is like in a case of water. It's what it feels like, case of cold water. And then you're sweating inside the boots. So the warm rating, rating goes out the window. I even have my Merrell boots, which Merrell don't really make great waterproof boots, but same thing with the tongue gusset. And if you can have waterproof on your boot, you got to have that gusset in it on the tongue where it comes all the way up to the boot. So same thing with these boots. They might be actually shorter than than the Sperry Colway boots. They're shorter. They're not that high. They're mid, mid, uh, mid height. But I could still step in a higher puddle or I could walk through snow more comfortable with this boot because of that. It doesn't let anything in. My feet will be dry. My feet is always dry in these boots. You know, my feet are also always dry in these boots because the, the tongue gusset comes all the way up. Now, I have simple chucker boots here where just to show you guys, you know, you see that there's no gusset in of the tongue. So that's an that's sort of an opposite of when you don't have a gusset there. So these boots aren't waterproof. These boots aren't snowproof and these boots aren't warm. So everything is exposed. So everything gets right in there because there's no tongue gusset in here. It's almost the same thing. You, you could just might as well cut that out. And that's what you'll have. You'll have no protection because that is really thin. It's really uh, and it has a hole in it, too. So on both sides, there's a hole there for the shoelaces. So that's a flaw in this boot design. They're not snow boots. They're not serious snow boots and not. As far as rain boots, that you could get away with them in the rain if you wear, like I said, you wear your pants leg low over the boot. You know, you could get away with wearing these in the rain or you could actually also get what I have here over my other side of the hiking boots is Gore-Tec Gore -Tec rain gaiters or snow gaiters or hiking gaiters. You wear these over the, the, your Sperry Kobe boots and you should be fine. These seal in your feet from outside elements like snow and cold and wet, whatever. So these are great. Uh, I re highly recommend these 50, 50 to sixty dollars. You could wear these if you already have the Sperry Kobe boots and you get, find out you get wet feet a lot. You could buy one of these for fifty, sixty dollars and just when it snows or it rains really hard, you just wear it over your boot. And it goes, they go, these go on easy. You could take these on and off as you go to work or go from the car to your house or wherever. And they come up to about right under your kneecaps. So. So from your kneecaps down, you'll be waterproof because uh, it will come all the way down to the rubber here. So that's one way of combating it. Another thing is with the water getting in is that they're not, these boots aren't really snow resistant because this, whatever this suede microfiber material is, is a magnet for snow. So what will happen as you walk through snow, especially if you wear your pants inside the boot, snow sticks to this thing and then snow melts or just soaks in. And what happens, the inside hair gets wet easily. And your pants get wet easily because the snow is just sticking to that micro suede. It's, I don't know why they use that. It's, just a, it's a magnet for snow. And, you know, as a result, I, don't, I didn't find them to be snowproof boots as well. So I wish it was just a leather, continuation of the leather up there. So, so these boots are not waterproof. Might as well just cross that off. I'm sure the leather maybe is waterproof and the rubber is waterproof. And the design is, well, not the design, but the, um, the seam between the materials are waterproof. But the design of the boots... It's just that big flaw right there. They're not waterproof at all. I'm sorry to let you guys know. So if I was to rate these boots, they'll be three generous three stars, more like two and a half stars, simply because these boots promise to be waterproof. They promise to be cold rated with the thin to late lining. They're not, I don't find they're as cold rated because of that. And you can't have this and have this thin sheet right here and have your boot rated to negative 25 degree Fahrenheit. That's like, that's going to let anything in. That's going to let water and moisture in. You know, that's not going to keep your feet warm. So I didn't find them to be as warm as, you know, like Sorel's or Baffin boots where you do have that gusseted tongue that's waterproof and thick. You know, hair is just thin and it just lets water right in. So two and a half stars basically because these boots do not do what they say they want to do for your feet. But they do look so damn good. And the quality of the materials used are really good and the snow ice wet pavement um traction is really great so i would say three and that's being generous three stars out of five stars for these boots and that's my review for the sperry colbay boots